Hey everyone, Brett Lemley here, director of the Tango Mercurio Community Orchestra in Washington, D.C. And in this video, I want to talk about a question that I get uh, with some frequency and a subject that comes up with some frequency, and that is, why should I practice out of a method book when I have other music that I'd like to play? Uh, most of us come to this instrument, the bandoneon, through uh, some other form of music, usually tango, sometimes polka, sometimes some sort of folkloric music, or, or maybe church music, um, or something like that. Uh, why not just work on that rather than work out of a method book? And my answer to that question is always, you should. You should be playing other types of music. I came to this uh, instrument through tango, so of course, um, and of course I play in the orchestra, so of course I play that other music. Um, but when you're learning an instrument, you want to learn the instrument that you, so that you can play the kind of music you'd like to play. It's not necessarily as efficient or as easy to do to learn an instrument by playing music because if you're learning a style of music, there's stuff that gets left out. For example, in tango, we very rarely close the instrument. So uh, you're uh, neglecting half of the instrument. You're neglecting the closing half. Um, and um, in other forms of music, there might be other techniques that get left out. So by working on a method, you end up playing the entire instrument. So for example, opening and closing. Uh, in the Ambrose method, you spend fully half your time closing the instrument. Um, so it makes you a better player so that you can react to whatever comes in, in your groups at home. Also, in methods, um, methods force you to do what I call eating your spinach, which is things like scales and arpeggios and things like that. Um, if you don't know your scales and arpeggios, you don't know your instrument. So it's good to play in all the keys, play all your scales, play all of your arpeggios, and cover all that technical ground, again, so that if you're put into a situation that's unfamiliar, you'll be better able to, to deal with it. Um, also, uh, the Ambrose method um, and all the other bandoneon methods that I've seen force you to play with both hands very early. You're playing with both hands in the very third exercise of the Ambrose book, uh, and you're playing it with both hands for the rest of the book. So um, often, and I'm guilty of this as well, when I play in the orchestra, I'm, uh, I'm often playing only with one hand. I'm playing the melody, or if I've got chords and somebody else has a melody, I'll just play the chords. And oftentimes, um, I neglect the other hand. So a method book forces you, again, it's sort of, you know, eat your vegetables, you know. Um, play with both hands, play opening, play closing. Um, do all of that, uh, uh, all of that stuff. And, uh, and finally, um, it goes back to an earlier point that I made that a method book makes you play the entire instrument. And so if you can play the entire instrument, you're more likely to be able to play things that you're not used to. And I'll give you an example. I got asked by a friend of mine about three months ago, ago to play in a polka band. And because uh, he didn't have an accordion player, and as far as he could tell, this was an accordion. So he asked me if I could play polka, and I said, I never have, but give me the music and I'll take a look. So um, because I had been practicing, I was able to say to him, hey, you know, if your pianist can do this, I can do that. And, you know, we worked something out. We played a polka gig. It was fun. So um, I highly recommend that, yes, absolutely play in your tango band, play in your polka bands, play whatever you want. Um, but if you want to learn the instrument, it's a good idea to work out of a method book. It's a very, very good idea. So I highly recommend it. Um, so that's my take on that. If you have any comments or any questions for me, go ahead and leave a comment uh, below the video. And uh, we're going to proceed uh, in the next set of videos to everybody's favorite subject, scales. Uh, we love our scales. We love playing our scales. Uh, but again, if you don't know your scales, you don't know the instrument. So I'm going to fast forward a little bit for the next few videos to page 104 and the following pages and work on some scales and, so, and show you some of those. 
and then we'll come back and start doing uh, some more of these uh, these exercises in the early part of the book. I hope you guys are finding these videos helpful. I've noticed that I've got a few subscribers now. That's fantastic. I hope uh, I hope I'm helping some people out. And thank you very, very much uh, for the support. And again, ask me any questions you'd like, and I'll be as helpful as I can be. All right, thanks a lot, and um, we'll see you in the next video.